Father Paul Charbonneau's daily talks to the residents of the Brentwood Recovery Home. Talk number seven, discipline. Yesterday we were talking about the two basic elements of life. Not just for an alcoholic. They're very, very basic in our recovery. But these should be the two natural, natural ways of life and living. Confiding, you look at that child, and conforming. Confiding in the right people, his parents, his friends, brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, grandparents, natural. So that little child begins by having difficulty with his little will to conform to the will, the good, the love of the parents. He begins to disobey, he begins to want his little will, and he wants his parents to conform to him, to his wants to his way. And if he can't have his way, then he might pout, stomp his feet, or whatever. Now, ordinarily, he will get over that. Be back then in union with his parents, back on good terms, you know, conforming to what they want, what they believe in, because they only want him to conform to what is good for him. That means then he will be developing and training himself in obedience, in respect, in cooperation. He will be developing and training himself in faith and trust by listening, by accepting. We begin to have the trouble in the conforming first to what they believe in, that their love is telling us, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a grandparents, whether it's our parents and so on, and we begin to follow our own way and listen to the people we hang around with. Who are we listening to? What are we listening to? Our own feelings, our own way. Them, there, but not the people who care for us not the people who are responsible for us, not the people who love us. And we are headed in our own direction, and we are taking direction from these people who could care less about us, and maybe are having the same difficulty. And we are not training ourselves, we are not disciplining ourselves, we are not developing the spiritual qualities. Of faith and trust, you're not listening. You're not believing, you're not trusting. Your way is better. And so there's no discipline. We become undisciplined doing our own thing. We are not listening to the right people. We are not taking the right directions, the right advice. We are listening either to ourselves. Then you're not going to be directed and trained to listen, to discipline yourself as regards your needs. Only the people who care for you and love you know what you need all we know is what we want. And we listen to the people who want the same things as we do. We follow the direction of our wants, what seems good to us, for me. And they turn out to be weaknesses because they're all selfish, pertaining to me, what I want, what seems good to me. And I stop asking, and I stop listening, and I stop following the people who care for me and the people who love me, who want to direct me, give me the right directions for the things that are good for me, not just what I want or what I think is good for me. To take directions. Who did we take directions from? Who did we take orders from? Ourselves and the people who are like us. Training, discipline, development. Taking orders. 
If you don't do that at school, as regards the discipline and taking orders and following directions, we develop disobedience, disrespect, resentments, self-will. Now, we think those things are good. And those things begin to control us. And what we develop and how we train ourselves are in those weaknesses that turn us against people, that put us in opposition to the people who care. Now, you knew damn well that you had to train yourself and follow orders as regards a trade or a business. And yet, when it came to the most essential and basic elements of life, living, happiness, love, getting along with people, establishing friendships and establishing relationships, nobody could tell you a damn thing. You just figured that that was just natural and that stuff would just happen. It wasn't natural. And it didn't happen. Thinking and believing that making your own decisions is the key to life, the key to freedom, the key of being grown up, the key, the key of being a man or being a woman. Now, without any training, without any developing of the spiritual qualities that are necessary, necessary ingredients to give you the ability to make decisions. So uh, you know, the whole life revolving around, around myself, so all the decisions were just for me can't help it. That's how we trained ourselves. That's how we developed in that kind of a bird, in that kind of a person. And so we began making these decisions. Top of our head, snap decisions. You know, full of resentment, make a decision to quit, to get even with him. Full of hate, make a decision on, on hate. You know, full of self-pity, make the decision. Influenced completely. So you make those decisions on your own, not out of love of yourself or really what you need, you're all blind to that, or out of love to them what they need. And then day by day, our decisions become more selfish, more blind, more irresponsible, and they get you into jackpots, into hot waters, cause more and more trouble. Others have to either bail you out or suffer the consequences until finally somebody makes a decision. You're gone haul your ass out of here, whether home or work or police, court or doctor or so on. We wanted the right to make decisions and we took it and you see what happened. Then we come to the point that the decisions of others we could not believe, could not trust, could not accept. It was an infringement on ourselves and our freedom. And pretty soon, we could not accept the decisions of anyone. And the decisions of others rocked our old head bone and sent us topsy-turvy. Now, decision should have better qualities than that as the basis of making a decision. It should be very intellectual, full of reason. But if it's not with an open heart, anything spiritual. And every, every decision by others got us going in turmoil and conflict, and we took it personal, even though we never knew it, and that decision was made 2,000 miles from us. You know, everybody became stupid, everybody became selfish, and pretty soon the decisions of others racked us and racked us and racked us, our own decisions racked us and racked us. And then, with so much confusion and so much hurt and so much <clears throat> stupidity, we come to the point that we didn't want to make any decisions. As we got older, and when the decisions were pertaining to the family or to others, that were very serious and responsible, the fact that we were getting more irresponsible and things were really happening to us, then we backed off of decisions. The things that you should have decided on 
or I helped others with this. I said, you handle it, you do it, you do it. You, know, you go. And see, the whole thing got asked backwards. We, we were the only ones to make decisions for ourselves. Nobody else had a right. When others made decisions, even not pertaining to us, government, medical, education, we should be like that. They were stupid. They had no right. They don't know what they're talking about. And then when the wife wanted us to make decisions, or we should be making decisions for the family, we were too damn afraid, too scared, too selfish, didn't have time. You make it. And then we come to the point that we couldn't make one damn decision at all. To get help, to fix things up, to come to Brentwood. The big he-man who started off needing and wanting to make decisions and going to make decisions the rest of his life just for himself, looking forward to it, come to the point that he can't make one damn decision that is worthwhile. That's sad, how this sickness can destroy and reduce us to a nothingness, that we are nothing. Because if a person is supposed to be an adult, supposed to be a father, a mother, a responsible person can't let others make decisions for him or her, can't accept the decisions of anybody all over the world, they're all stupid, they're all crazy, they don't know what they're talking about, they're all selfish, everybody all for himself, and they just rock him and rock him, and then comes to the point that he can't make a damn decision. That everything is a, is a mountain, everything is a turmoil, everything is a burden, and he will either postpone decisions and postpone decisions. Little, you know, did you do that yet? No, I haven't done it yet. You promised, you were supposed to do that yesterday. Okay, I'll do it today. And then you know damn well what's going on in your gut, and you know that you're a chicken, and you know that you're a cop-out. And that guilt, and that hate, and that resentment, and that embarrassment just grabs you and grabs you and eats away at you because you know it's the most unmanly, irresponsible, immature thing. The thing that we started off with like that, making a decision, the point. You can't accept decisions, and you can't make decisions. You know damn well that you're sick. You know damn well that you're in trouble, and you can't even make the decision to get help. That you are nothing. And if that kept up, you will finally make the decision to kill yourself until you make the decision to get help. 5, 10, 15, 25 years later than you should have. That's maturity. That's happiness. That's being a man. That's being a woman. That's freedom. That's life. That's living. That's alcoholism. The word disciple comes from. That you're able to follow someone that you respect or believe or trust. That someone cares, someone knows maybe a little better, and you begin to follow. You discipline yourself to accept, to follow, and you become a disciple. That's where, but who in the hell did we follow? Who did we really trust that really meant anything, that we listened to, we adhered to, you know, we respected, that really meant something, and allowed that person to have that kind of influence on us? Alcoholic? It's impossible. Doesn't make sense to him. Figure he's a wimp, he won't be a man. He won't be stand-up. None of that stuff made sense to us, because love didn't make sense to us. And we see what in the hell happened to us. Empty, confused, scared, to the point that we can only accept decisions, we can't even make any. And we know when we can't make decisions, even the simplest, we know we are in trouble. And yet it will take us an awful long time before we can make the decision to accept the fact that we're in trouble and to go and, and seek help.